Good morning, and thanks for joining me for this special celebration of our August 2020 Husker graduates. In normal times, your faculty, family, and friends would be gathered at Pinnacle Bank Arena for our formal commencement ceremony. It's always my favorite time of the year. In fact, the University of Nebraska has celebrated commencement with a formal ceremony nearly every year since 1869, with very few exceptions. One of those commencement cancellations was, believe it or not, during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Back then, as now, we didn't let world events get in the way of figuring out other ways to recognize the great accomplishments of our graduates. The pandemic forced us to go virtual for our May graduation celebration, and once again, we are online celebrating our August graduates. So we're bringing back some of the best moments from the May show, plus adding some special new features just for our August graduates. This includes a photographic look back over the past four years and inspiring words from alumna Marilyn Moore. You are a bundle of potential. We invite you to share in the celebration on social media using the hashtag GoBigGrad. While we're excited to celebrate today, this online video is certainly not a substitute for the real thing. So we sincerely invite our graduates to come back to your alma mater and join us at one of our future in-person ceremonies at Pinnacle Bank Arena. You'll get to walk across the stage and we'll be giving you special recognition as the class of 2020. No question, it has been a challenging four or five months for all of us around the world but I could not be prouder of how this class showed their true grit as everything changed. We ask a few graduates how they made the best of the situation. I felt like I was just thrown in all of a sudden to a new environment. My only recital I have <laughs> for the degree was planned to be in April. Every single professor found a way to get as much of a personal experience as when we were together in a classroom through Zoom, <laughs> through video. It was such a great experience and I think they, they went well above and beyond with trying to really make things personal, really make themselves accessible even in such a difficult time. So I was an RA or resident assistant and then all of a sudden the dorms needed to close after spring break. I have 48 girls, which was pretty much a full, or full floor. And some of them were international. I had a couple girls from Rwanda. I had people from Malaysia. I had people that were really going through it because they can't go home. And then they had that worry of being homeless. I talked to the director of housing and I asked because I was nervous once we consolidated. I'm like, I've been telling my international students that they're always gonna have a place to live. What's happening? And he even told me, Krista, there's no way any student will become become homeless. I felt like everything was just kind of catered towards the student. My professor, she was really good about checking in with her students, being flexible with deadlines, and um, having the personal relationships with each one of her students. And having that, that, that two-way communication, like going back and forth um, to the point where it's like you, you wanted to perform well in the classroom just because you knew your professor cared. And once you add that into the equation, I mean, that's, that's like some of the best learning I've had so far. My studio professor kind of went above and beyond before this whole pandemic started. Made himself available to us at all hours. And so we kind of thought this might stop, but instead he kind of set up this unlimited office hour situation. And then you just could pop in and out of a meeting with them, uh, check in. Uh, it was always just really, really helpful. You just, sometimes you don't think that that's, uh, you're, a professor would go so far to make sure everything's going right for you when things may not be going great for them either. They really looked out for me and cared about getting to know me and being able to help me succeed. I feel like UNL handled it really well. Everyone knows Harvard, and I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but I am because they kicked their students out and they had nowhere to go. People actually want to get to know you. People actually care about you, and that's a reflection of the students, that's a reflection of the faculty and staff, that's a reflection of the professors at UNL. I'm so glad I'm at Nebraska because they looked after their students um, and there truly is no place like Nebraska. By now, 
all graduates should have received a small gift from your university. Our staff has worked behind the scenes preparing and mailing about 700 celebration boxes to our August 2020 honorees. Depending on your degree, you'll find a mortarboard or TAM, a letter from me, plus some other fun ways to celebrate your accomplishment. I hope your box adds a little joy to your family festivities. Throughout today's program, we'll hear from some proud alumni and supporters. In this time of social distancing, thankfully, we have a little help from technology. This spring, I took a call from one of our very most famous graduates. Ronnie, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I hope that you're good for you. staying well and doing, doing well on this time. Uh, you were a member of the class of 1951. What, it, what advice would you like to share with our graduates? All I'd like to say to all of you graduates is that investing in yourself is the best investment you'll ever make. What I learned at UNL 70 years ago is it's delivered huge dividends to me throughout my lifetime, and it'll do the same for you as well. So congratulations to all of you, and go Big Red. Go Big Red indeed, Warren. Uh, best wishes to you. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I'm, I'm cheering for every UNL graduate. Congratulations on your graduation. I am so sorry that you cannot do the traditional graduation ceremony, but we all understand you're living through historic times. You'll be able to look back someday and say, remember when? But in the meantime, just remember, Go Big Red! Congratulations to the August graduating class of 2020 at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. On behalf of the entire faculty and staff and administration, I want to say just how proud we are of your graduating accomplishment. In these most unusual times, the future of our nation, our state, and quite honestly, the world depends on you. We're looking forward to everything that you can do. Congrats. You are now graduates of the University of Nebraska. Because of it, your life will be full of opportunities that are beyond your comprehension. Go Big Red. Congratulations, graduates, you've earned it. On behalf of the faculty of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I wish you all the best as you take what you've learned and use it to make a positive impact in the world. We're all cheering for you. Go Big Red. Congratulations, your achievement today has been built on years of dedication and hard work. Good luck as you pursue your future. We wish all of you success in the years to come. I know that it has been challenging times recently, but I want to personally congratulate all of you and wish you the best of luck. We are all so proud of you. Go Big Red. The NU Coliseum is an iconic campus building. Today, students have access to its polished hardwood floors for intramural sports and other campus recreation activities. But the Coliseum hosted many years of sold out volleyball games until Husker Volleyball moved to Devaney Sports Center in 2013. We actually celebrated commencement here starting in 1926. Over the years, the ceremony has been held at various other locations, including outdoors by Memorial Stadium, the downtown Pershing Auditorium, and the Devaney Sports Center. With record enrollments in recent years, our graduating class outgrew even the Devaney Center. So these days, in normal times, we hold ceremonies in Pinnacle Bank Arena. It offers more than 15,000 seats for family and friends. If you haven't been on campus this summer, there have been a few big changes and signs of progress. On East Campus, renovation is well underway at C.Y. Thompson Library to create a new learning commons, and the Nebraska East Union renovation is in the home stretch. The first phase of the College of Engineering's upgrade is nearing the halfway point of construction. The final steel beam will be hoisted into place later this month. And Mabel Lee Hall is gone. Construction is beginning here on a modern replacement building scheduled to be completed in 2022. The new facility will create new classrooms and office space for the College of Education and Human Sciences. 
That college, once called Teachers College, is where Marilyn Moore began her journey to a lifelong career in education. She served 40 years as a middle school teacher, a human resources administrator, and associate superintendent of Lincoln's public schools. As an encore career, Dr. Moore served as president of Bryan College of Health Sciences. She has been recognized with numerous awards, including our university's Outstanding Alumnus Award. Dr. Moore has served on dozens of community boards and organizations, including president of the LEAD Center Advisory Board and is a new member of the Nebraska Alumni Association Executive Board. I'm so pleased to welcome Marilyn Moore back to campus as our speaker today. She reflects on literature and life in her talk titled, The Air Between Us. The Air Between Us a phrase uttered by Edward, a teenage boy who is the main character in the novel Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. This is a story of a boy who is the sole survivor of an airplane crash, and it's based on a real crash in 2010. In the novel, Edward has to rebuild his life physically, cognitively, socially, emotionally, in absolutely every way, while living with his aunt and uncle in a home that is new to him, a new community, a new school, and blessedly a new best friend, Shay, a girl his own age who lives next door, who manages the just right balance of watches out for him and cuts him no slack. His high school physics teacher introduces him to the Large Hadron Collider and the research on particle physics, attempting to answer the questions of the smallest particles, their speed, their behavior, their relationship to one another. In Edward's mind, the questions are at the very heart of existence, his and everyone else's. And as the story draws to an end, and Edward is healing, is stronger in every way, he reflects on all the people who were a part of his rebuilding process, especially his uncle, his physics teacher, his principal, and Shay. And in reflecting, he utters the words, the air between us is not dead space. I'm struck by Edward's story for so many reasons. I started my career as a middle school teacher and I shall always and forever have a special place in my heart for the students in the middle. Edward was 12 when the plane crashed, right in the middle of middle school, which is a hard time for most early adolescents. Like Edward, I'm attracted to the wonders of our world revealed by the physicists and the metaphors for life from particle physics. And like Edward, I wonder about the air between us and I so agree that it is anything but dead space. The past five months, in which all of you who are graduating today have completed your degrees in a manner never before considered, have given us ample opportunity to consider the air between us, the great disruptors, a worldwide pandemic unlike any in the past 100 years, and a worldwide reaction and revulsion to the murder of a black man by a Minneapolis white police officer, have sent waves of questions, doubts, and fears through the air between us. I call these events disruptors because they have been, they are, and they will continue to disrupt our lives, our individual lives and our collective communal lives. The pandemic has changed how we work, how we learn, how we socialize, how we transact business, how we travel, how we worship. It has changed how medical care is delivered, how courtroom cases are heard, how legislatures conduct business, and how children are educated. George Floyd's murder and the subsequent racial unrest has caused people in this country and around the world to reconsider what they believe to be true about history to compare what a community's or nation's stated values are to the lived experiences of people within that community or nation, and to think again about language and symbols and power and voice. These have been hard moments as we have confronted that which was in the air between us. And yet, through these moments of questions and doubts and fears, there have been other moments, moments that remind us and make clear to us the connections we share with one another in the air between us. Both disruptors made abundantly clear that no one stands alone, that the idea of the rugged individual is far less viable than the idea of the common good. We are absolutely dependent upon one another to emerge from the pandemic. 
We are dependent upon the scientists to understand the disease and to develop a vaccine. We are dependent upon the healthcare workers to provide the highest level of care for those now 15 plus million persons worldwide who have contracted COVID-19. We are dependent upon essential workers, those who could not work from home so that we could have groceries and transportation and protection of life and property. And we are dependent upon our neighbors and colleagues, they who make wise decisions to halt the spread of the virus and in so doing make the community safer for everyone. We are absolutely dependent upon one another to emerge through the very real racial unrest and tension that has marked the past three months and the previous four centuries. This is a time that forces those of us in the majority culture to confront and acknowledge our own biases and actions, our part in a society marked by systemic racism. This is communal work. It is work that happens because we listen, we hear, we reflect, and we act. With both disruptors, we have the opportunity to create new knowledge, new connections, and new stories in the air between us because that air between us, as Edward recognized, is not dead space. One person ill in one part of the world is followed by more than 15 million people ill around the world because the virus recognizes no boundaries. We are connected to one another. One black person killed by one white police officer unleashed action and reflection around the world. We are connected to one another. And in the days going forward, we have the grand opportunity to do better, to strengthen communities, to take actions for health and healing, to make decisions for the greater good. And you, graduates of the class of 2020, are in the best of positions to help the world write a better story, to strengthen the air between us, a story of regard for science and regard for the inherent value of humankind, a story of connections rather than divisions, a story of hope rather than fear. Every discipline represented by you, the graduates of 2020, connects to and lends value to the story of connectedness that is waiting to be written. Representative John Lewis, who led and lived civil rights activism until his death this summer said, when you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to say something to do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? Edward was captivated by the study of the subatomic particles in the air between us. Some physicists describe those particles as bundles of potential. I love that phrase. The image of light and energy all bundled together, ready to explode into action and effect and impact poised on the precipice of this next step, you are a bundle of potential. You bring all that and more to your next step. So go and do. The world is waiting for you to write the new story of the air that is between us. Hello everyone, as a proud alumnus of the University of Nebraska, I'd like to congratulate all of you on earning a degree from our wonderful institution. Good luck to everybody in the future and go Big Red. I want to wish you congratulations on this amazing accomplishment. You should be very proud of yourselves right now. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Go Big Red. Hi everyone, Eric Crouch here. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, a, a long journey that's uh, well deserved. Uh, I wish you all the very best uh, in your future endeavors, and uh, go Big Red. Hey guys, Jordan Larson here. I just wanted to say uh, congratulations. I know this situation isn't the most ideal, but you guys did it, and wishing you all the best and success in the years to come. Class of 2020, congratulations on graduating. Enjoy these moments, have fun with it, but prepare for the next endeavors in life. Go Big Red. Hello, fellow Huskers. I would like to send my dearest congratulations to you all for becoming Husker graduates. Though we cannot be together to celebrate your successes in person, I hope you all can take a moment to appreciate the monumental accomplishments you all have made and how it has prepared you for the next step in your journey. Be proud and welcome to the family of Husker alumni. Well, congratulations to all of you graduating seniors. I know this is a little bit of a, an interrupted process for you, but this is the end of a very significant journey. So congratulations on your accomplishment it's a big deal, 
and we want to make sure that going forward you guys have a great experience in the rest of your lifetime and you're proud of your experience that you had here at the University of Nebraska. Congratulations. I often reflect on the outright grit that our founders had to have to establish this great university in 1869. The first chancellor, Alan Benton, planned the original four block city campus and purchased this land now known as East Campus. How lucky we are that Nebraska's flagship land grant university has helped generations experience the transformative power of higher education. There are a lot of people here who continue to build on a bold vision started in 1869. Congratulations from the College of Architecture on achieving this milestone in your life. There has never been a more important time to use your education to affect a positive world. So go Big Red, go Big Grad. I want to congratulate the students graduating today with a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminology and Criminal Justice. I urge you to take what you have learned to make our society safe, fair, and just. Congratulations to you on this wonderful achievement. This is a special moment and we applaud all the hard work that you have done to get here. On behalf of everyone in the College of Arts and Sciences, we wish you every continued success. Go Big Grab! Congratulations to every one of you who are earning a master's or a doctorate degree. Go Big Grad and Go Big Red! Congratulations, graduates. We are proud of you and look forward to the many ways you will lead the future of business. Hey, Husker graduates, congratulations. It's been a crazy spring and summer, but you made it. You've demonstrated grit and resilience, and now you can proudly call yourself a Husker alum. We are proud of all you've accomplished and look forward to seeing all you will do in the future. Go Big Red. Kessner graduates, you did it. Congratulations on reaching this important milestone. Go Big Red and welcome to the Kessner alumni. Congratulations graduates, you're off to great things. Go Big Grads and Go Big Red. Good morning to all our graduates, both our veterans as well as our ROTC graduates and all the graduates in general. Congratulations on this momentous occasion. Go Big Red and Go Big Grad. Hey Huskers, go be great leaders. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. From all of us in the Hickson Lee College of Fine and Performing Arts and to all of our graduates of 2020, go Big Red and go Big Grad. Congratulations. On behalf of the entire College of Engineering, congratulations to all of our August graduates. Now go do big things. Congratulations to the College of Journalism and Mass Communications August Class of 2020. You worked hard for this moment, and we are so proud of you. Congratulations. We cannot wait to see all you will accomplish. Go Big Red. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you on your graduation, especially our veterans, cadets, and midshipmen in the crowd today. Uh, this is a tremendous accomplishment, and we wish all of you the best of luck. Go Big Red. At Nebraska, we're proud to have students from every state in the country and more than 100 countries around the world. Our international students bring to campus an amazing richness of experiences and culture. In fact, American students often tell me how their world has expanded thanks to friendships with our students from abroad. Members of our global community want to extend a special greeting to our graduates. To all of our international students, we're so glad that you chose to make Nebraska your second home. Your presence has truly enriched our campus, and we're so proud that you will forever be a part of the global Husker community. Muraho Huskers, Hello Huskers, what an amazing four years together. Rokin at the Haraj, congratulations Husker graduates, and go pay grad. Thank you, UNL. I love you. These columns originally stood at Omaha's Burlington Railway Station. During the remodeling, they were shipped to this very spot on our campus in 1930. They framed the original campus gates, which were part of an iron fence that surrounded the entire city campus until 1925. Through these old gates have passed generations of Husker alumni. Let's hear from a few now. 
Congratulations to the class of 2020. I wish you a successful and fulfilled life in spite of the uncertain times in which we live. To each of you graduates, savor the moment. Congratulations. Your future is bright. Go for it. Congratulations, graduates. Go Big Red. And I am challenging you to be a leader, innovator, and risk taker to make a positive impact on the world. Your aspirations will evolve and that's okay. You have the education to make a difference. Congratulations and welcome to a global community of Nebraska alumni making a difference in our world. Just because you won't be walking across the stage doesn't mean that you can't march out and take on the world. How you handle adversity says so much more about you than any ceremony or celebration. And if that isn't enough to put this all into perspective, just remember that this also means that you get all of the cake to yourself. Congratulations on your accomplishment and go Big Red. Nothing pleases me more than watching as our alumni leverage their education to find success and impact in life. And now you're joining that proud family. Here with a special welcome is Shelley Zaborowski, Executive Director of the Nebraska Alumni Association. Congratulations, graduates. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Nebraska alumni family. Your college days have come to an unexpected end, but you're joining a supportive community of nearly 200,000 alumni living all around the world who are proud of all you have accomplished. For the rest of your lives, you are Nebraska alumni, and I encourage you to stay connected and engaged with the university as you go forth. The path for your Nebraska experience was paved by those who came before you. It now becomes your privilege to pay it forward to the next generation of Huskers through your gifts, not just of treasure, but of time, talent, and experience. As a way to say welcome, I'm proud to offer each member of the graduating class of 2020 a complimentary one-year membership in the Nebraska Alumni Association. You can claim your membership online at this website. Then, as an Alumni Association member, you'll see the many ways you can stay connected to the university and to other Huskers. You have much to offer our alma mater, and your continued involvement is critical to Nebraska's success. Once again, congratulations. Welcome to the alumni family. We've reached the finale of today's virtual celebration. If you have your cap nearby, now's the time to get it ready. As I put on my academic regalia, let me tell you a little bit about it. Academic costumes date back to the 12th and 13th centuries when universities were taking form. The ordinary dress of both students and teachers was the dress of a cleric, long gowns probably for warmth in unheated buildings. In the modern era, gowns have symbolic meanings tied to sleeve lengths, stoles, hoods, and colors. Our ceremonies culminate with the turning of the tassel on your cap. The tassel before graduation is on your right, symbolizing your times as a student here at the university. When moved to the left, you're identified now as a University of Nebraska graduate. It's now my honor to confer your degree. By authority of the state of Nebraska, vested in the University of Nebraska's Board of Regents, and upon recommendation from the faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each of you a degree from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln according to your particular curriculum and course of study with all of the associated honors, privileges, and responsibilities. Now, to make official your status as Husker graduates, I've asked an old friend to help us out. On my direction, I'll ask you to move your tassel from right to left. Class of 2020, please turn your tassel. And with that, you are a Nebraska graduate. I can't wait to see you back on our campus to participate in a future commencement ceremony or just to visit your alma mater. Although everything's disrupted, we're glad there's one thing they can't cancel, your bright future and impact on the world. On behalf of the entire Husker community, congratulations graduates in the class of 2020. Stay safe, be strong, and as always, go Big Red.